So it's time for our first ever book review on the channel and I'm so excited to bring you guys this and I first I want to thank everybody for all the positive feedback and the comments you guys left on the last video where I made the announcement that I'm going to be doing these book reviews and it really encouraged me and I'm more thrilled now to bring you guys all the lessons from some of my favorite books that I know you guys like to read a lot and book summaries are a fantastic tool that can be used in a variety of different ways. So that's something I want to cover here first. I mean, why even pay attention to a book summary? Why not just read the whole thing? Well, there's a couple of reasons that I would tell you my top three reasons for going for a summary. So number one reason, of course, is you get the biggest ideas without having to read the whole book, which is awesome, right? You save yourself many hours of time, many hours of effort, and you just get the biggest ideas. And that's kind of like a no brainer. You know, I don't have to spend six to eight hours on an audio book. If I can just listen to a summary, which is let's say five, six minutes or 10 or 15, even I mean, you just save yourself so many more hours that you can invest in something else. So that's kind of the first obvious reason. The second reason I would say is even more important, at least for me, is that I actually get an idea of what the book is about. So I get the biggest concepts before I read the book. So it's kind of like a teaser and it helps me decide whether the book is the right book for me at the time. Because as we said in the video where I shared with you guys some of my lessons from reading is that you can literally read a book and not remember a single word from it if you're not reading the right book at the right time for your current situation in your life. And that's why summaries are great because you can see whether that book is the right book for you to read at the right time and that will kind of encourage you and basically allow you to choose the right book to commit to. So that's even better from a reason for me than just getting the biggest ideas because even the ideas, they're useless if you're actually not implementing them. So the way I like to kind of get the summaries would be just watching videos like this one that I'm gonna summarize a book or let's say reading a summary or even going for podcasts or let's say TED Talks or Google Talks because a lot of these authors have a video content on YouTube where they do seminars and things like that. So it kind of is a nice little teaser of what they're really about. The third and the final point is that you read a lot of books. I'm pretty sure that you read and the issue is that we're forgetful, right? And especially if you're not implementing uh, all of the ideas from the book because some of the books are really packed and then you forget some things and that's why summaries are great because you actually remind yourself of a certain idea that you just didn't implement at the right time and then it kind of fell off. So the summary can remind you of that concept and then you can start implementing it and, and completely remind yourself of the idea that now, I mean, you might be hesitant to go back and read a book that you've already read because uh, that's kind of how our brain works. You know, the new book is always more exciting than the old one. And that's often why it takes so many uh, different books on the same topic to get yourself to implement something about that topic. Because simply you, you need reinforcement to take the idea seriously. So that's kind of the three reasons why I would say summaries are really, really useful. And now let's get on with the first ever summary on this channel. So I wanted to cover a simple book. I wanted to cover one of my favorite books and I wanted to keep it short and sweet for you guys to read that same book and um, so we can discuss a little bit in the comments. And that's why I picked one of the shortest and one of my most favorite books of all time. It's about a 30 pages long book. It's called The Flinch by Julian Smith. And I'm actually gonna leave the link to the book in the description below because it's a free to download book. And it's a non-fiction book, so it is a self-help book about a topic that is very raw. It's a topic that is really confronting your true nature in a way that it's something that is preventing you from living your life to the fullest. And what is the flinch? Let's kind of define it. And um, the flinch, it's uh, in, in simple terms, something you feel as a resistance for going outside of your comfort zone. So I'll give you a quick example here. A lot of people will flinch when they try to approach a stranger. Let's say a guy is looking to approach a girl. He sees and the girl's attractive and he wants to approach her. He gets he gets the idea that it would be awesome to approach the girl, but he, he flinches in the moment because now it's like that resistance. He can't take action. Similarly to a girl trying to do something or similarly to us stepping up in a social environment, expressing your opinion. Might, sometimes you might get this great idea that you wanna share with a lot of people and there's a lot of people around you and you, you say, oh, that would be great. And you try, but there's something preventing you, something choking you there that doesn't allow you to express yourself. And very similarly, that's why a lot of people hate public speaking. You know, they're just, they just flinch. And the flinch in reality is a protective mechanism. It's something that we've evolved to have and something that served us really well during the evolutionary 
phases that humans went through, I mean, this thing would probably save your life one day. You know, if you're facing, let's say there's like a huge bush and the bush starts shaking in front of you in a forest and you're alone, probably a good idea to start running, you know, or start searching for some kind of shelter because that could be a huge bear there waiting to eat you. So the flinch in that situation was a really good idea. But generally in today's world where you're not in danger, a lot of these risks, quote unquote, that we see and a lot of these things now are based more on emotions and they're based more on not true danger for your survival, but just danger for your ego. So like expressing your opinion or telling someone no, straight up telling someone no, you know, it, that's something that I find that a lot of people have a hard time with, you know, just look, if you don't want to do something, just say no, but it doesn't work like that. It's not easy because we flinch. And one great example from the book is the author says the cold shower, right? What is the danger of the cold shower? Is the shower head going to come out and choke you and, and kill you or something? No, it's simply the fact that we flinch, the water is cold and it's outside of the comfort zone. And now that little risk, that uh, seemingly huge risk to our mind in the moment, we don't take that risk. We don't take that chance. And a lot of people, when they start doing cold showers, they will experience that they're a lot more uh, free when it comes to expression, because now they, the first thing they did in the day was get out of the comfort zone. So now they kind of frame the whole day to go in that direction. That's why, I mean, I personally love cold showers, especially in the morning. As soon as I wake up, just do that cold shower to just shock the system, get out of the comfort zone, kind of beat the flinch right off the bat as soon as you wake up. So that's kind of the flinch. And what I like about this book is that it goes into the origins of the flinch. Like why is the flinch happening in the first place? And for me personally, I mean, I remember when I was a little kid, I want to share a story here with you guys, which is a little, a little bit of a funny story. It's a little bit embarrassing as well. So as a kid, I was a little bit crazy, right? I was like the little devil in the family. And uh, my brother was actually the normal one. I was the crazy one, right? And um, when I would do any, anything, I would really take it to the extreme. So for example, what I did was I would actually lock myself up in rooms often and my father had to break the door down or I would lock myself into a basement or a cellar and then my father had to go through like this small window to kind of pull me out of there. I would like uh, bust people's tires. I would uh, leave all the kitchen, like all the stoves on, I would leave all the lights on, I would do all sorts of crazy stuff, I would climb all the trees, I would uh, hide under cars when people would like start their car, you know, I, I would do all sorts of crazy stuff. I, I love, actually, I, I started a fire once inside of a car, you know, it's just ridiculous. And I was doing all these things and um, I was really not inhibited, right? In, in that moment of time, I was kind of like, okay, freedom to test out the world and see what the world has to offer. But as I grew older, because every time I, tr I did something like that, I was punished, right? I was, I was slightly punished. I don't mean physically, but I was told, hey, that's not okay. That's not cool. You shouldn't do that. You should behave like a civilized human being. And I was slowly being conditioned. And I'm not saying that you should light cars on fire and things like that. It's definitely not cool. But as a little kid, you don't have that inhibition. You're kind of doing the trial and error way of learning. But then slowly as you age, we, you move more toward that second hand type of learning. And with that second hand type of learning, you don't have any scars. There's not a lot of trial and error. You're simply taking someone's word for it, right? So when you're taking your teacher's word for the fact that if you put your hand on, in, into fire, that it's gonna be bad for you, right? So you're not gonna do that. And uh, what happens is that that's great for survival and for the basic stuff, but we start being preventive focused and being risk avoidant in almost everything. Now we don't, we want to take it to a whole different extreme and our brains work in extreme. So now you're kind of your monkey brain uh, that I like to call it, the one that is back here, like this part, not the prefrontal cortex, is taking over when anything is about to kind of be a little bit uncomfortable. So any little discomfort, now it's instantly a stress response and you don't want to take the risk. A lot of people experience this and this is what we slowly get in conditioned with and society is kind of working in a way that to make you feel comfortable. And of course, comfort is very, very valued in today's world and we are creatures of comfort. I mean, if you think about it, I went last night and I ate, um, I ate like this chocolate brownie and I was just thinking in my mind, damn, you know, it's like 350, 400 calories. Imagine how much my ancestors would have had to hunt how, much, how many calories would I have to expand to get this little chocolate brownie? 
It was so fascinating for me. I could just go there and just buy it, you know, it's nothing. And it's so incredible, like we're so spoiled in our today's world that all the things, I mean, most of our stuff is in our comfort zone. And when it's time to exit the comfort zone, take a little bit of a risk, maybe, I don't know, hire a new employee or switch a job, you know, or, or call it a day in a failed marriage or end in a relationship or start a new relationship or approach a person, a new person, meet someone, do a sales call, uh, write an email to some of your, who's your mentor or somebody who just want to say thank you at an event, just hold the microphone and you get the flinch and you don't do it at it, right? And what are you really protecting yourself against? That's a big question we have to ask ourselves. And with the book, uh, I think one of the va most valuable pieces of information that I mean, lesson that I get, got out of the book is that this flinch is with us all the time, right? It never leaves you. It's going to be with you until the day you die because you've been conditioned into the flinch. And now you can only, what you can do is fight the flinch daily and kind of create habits where it's going to lead you to take more action, uh, overcome that flinch and make great things happen. And take those small risks, right? Become a little bit of a risk taker in certain things. Of course, you want to be smart. You want to, don't want to do stupid shit. But again, it is that we're going so far in a different extreme that not a lot of people today are doing absolutely anything that is taking them outside of the comfort zone. We're very, very hesitant when it comes to these things and it's a little bit sad. And what the author recommends in the book is actually calling the flinch out sometimes. You know, acknowledging the fact that there is a flinch there, that you are being that person who is just for, for a reason that is not the lack of information, that you have all the information, especially today. I mean, let's face it, you know, I mean, we have so much information that's ridiculous that to even say that you don't know how to do something it's a little bit embarrassing if you think about it because you can just simply Google it and you have the answer to that. It's really the fact that you have to admit to yourself that you're not taking action. You know, that's the number one thing and that's really what I like about the book is that it's, it's raw and it's a book where you have to admit to yourself that certain things you're not doing because you don't have the courage. It's not the fact that you don't have the knowledge. You know, it's not the fact that the thing is too hard for you. Uh, it's just that you don't have the courage at, at the moment, right? And we don't want to admit that to ourselves. We, we think that it's supposed to be amazing from the minute one, you know? That's why a lot of people, when they go on a diet, when they go on a weight loss journey, they give up, you know? Because they don't anticipate the fact that the journey itself will make you stronger because it's the journey that is outside of your comfort zone. That's exactly why it is making you stronger. So the, the whole point is to, you want to get started, right? You want to get started before you actually feel ready or before you feel like you're, you're moving comfortably in that direction. It's if, you, if you're comfortable, it's probably not making you grow. And that's a really, really big part of this book that I enjoyed so much is because it's really facing your fear and first admitting that you have this fear because we all have this fear. This fear is with us and those who don't admit that they are flinching, I mean, that's simply, man, you're either lying to yourself or you're some kind of Superman. Literally every single person on this planet is flinching with something and it's a normal thing, but the successful people and people that have acknowledged the flinch, I mean, something that I've really strived for in the last couple of years ever since I discovered the concept is use the flinch as a compass and as a guideline to know where I need to go. Because think about it for a second. I mean, the thing that is outside of your comfort zone, number one is the thing that's gonna make you grow the most. Number two is the thing that you actually have to do. So that's exactly what the flinch is telling you. The flinch is a compass telling you where the action needs to go, which direction you need to go. And going against the flinch and just taking action is literally gonna propel you and give you the most reward for your action taking effort. That's what it is. That's what the flinch is used for. And if there's no flinch, if I'm really not flinching and if I'm thinking that something is inside of my comfort zone, I'm, I'm almost skeptical to, uh, to the fact that thinking, well, is that really gonna make me grow as a person or am I stagnating? So I'm, I'm asking myself now, well, this seems to have no flinch whatsoever. So it's probably not the thing that I should be doing right now. It's probably something that is uh, very low on the priority list because it is not making me uncomfortable. It's a really good factor to kind of think about it. You know, it's kind of that high pain, high reward situation or low pain and kind of in the moment and low reward in the moment and probably even more pain in the future, right? It's kind of that uh, way of thinking of using this concept as 
as your direction, as your guideline, as your Google Maps or whatever you wanna call it, as something to show you where you need to go in life. And that's um, my final lesson here that I've learned from Dave Flinch fantastic book i mean i cannot hardly i mean there's no words that i can describe how important this book was for me in my life um, and it comes to taking action that's why i reread it so many times and i said less than an hour it takes you to read this the link is going to be in the description below i'm looking forward to when you guys read it leave a comment on this video leave the comment below what do you think about the idea because i know a lot of you will read it i know a lot of you will jump into it straight up you can read it on the way to work or you can read it on the bus or, or anywhere it's very very short so let me know your lessons in the comments below for this video and aside from that make sure to that subscribe button to support the channel and i will see you guys in the next video peace